How you live your life is about your mindset. You are in control of your life. So don't wait for what life gives you. Make it happen. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad with Project Eli, where we educate, we lead, we inspire. And we are sort of in the beginning stages of a, of a little series we're doing based upon an article that I really, really liked by a gentleman named Matthew Roy, Royce entitled Five One-Sentence Life Lessons, Advice on how to, live, how to Live an Extraordinary Life. We went through 10 the last time we, we were together. Let's go through 10 more because I think they're kind of fun. I think they're kind of neat. Focus on what you can control and ignore what you can't control. Okay, you're in a situation, let me give you an example. We're having a, yeah, we're in a pandemic, all right? You can't control the pandemic. So what do you do? You say to yourself, okay, this is where I am. Look at the situation as it is, not better than it is, not worse than it is, but as it is, and then envision something better than what you have. Does that make sense? Now, then you're in the position, you know, where, you know, you're in the house for a year. Now I've got the shots. You know, last year I wasn't able to go to my, you know, big reunion that I go to in Maine every year because we didn't have it. I got my shots. I'm in control. This year I'm going. To grow richer, seek new experiences, not new things. Too many people place their desires on shiny objects, let's call them, all right? experiences when when the things that you remember in life when you get older and trust me Eli I think I can be in that older category by now are the experiences that you had and not the goodies that you were able to obtain in life go for the experiences so when you're thinking about you know where am I going to go on vacation or whatever think about the experiences that you're going to have don't be thinking about the material stuff because that goes by the wayside and the experiences remain. Develop a healthy relationship with money. All right, that's a very simple concept. Set aside some dollars. All right, just, you know, don't what most people do is, you know, when they get it, they, they get a raise in pay is they increase what they're spending. You can do that to some degree, but also set aside some money for a rainy day. You don't know when stuff's going to happen. And money, currency, whatever you want to talk about, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. People get time off at work, let's say, and that accrues over time. So, so like, let's say you get a day off every month. Have some of that in the bank because you don't know what's going to happen. In my particular case, I got a, I had a, a broken hip and I was at work and I had to take like two months off. That would have cost me a huge ton of money. But instead of costing me a whole ton of money, I had that time off saved in the bank so that when the time came, I'm still getting paid every week while I'm recuperating. Make sure that if you break your hip, so to speak, that you have time in the bank, that you have money in the bank to cover you. So establish that relationship. And it's a habit. Just develop the habit of setting aside a few dollars every time you can. Create more than you consume. To, you know, it, it, this also goes to money. I mean, you can't take all your money and spend it on something that's going to inhibit you moving forward in your life. You need to make sure that as a person you're creating more than you consume as well. And this goes to relationships. All right? Create some good create some good space with the people around you, the people that matter the most. And when you, you know, more than you take away, be a giver, be a giver and be, have a servant leadership attitude. Give more than you take. Change your mindset about vacation. It's good for you. Hey, 
everybody needs to recharge their batteries. And what happens when you regenerate, you regenerate, you generate again, it puts you in a different perspective, a different paradigm. You know, when I go to, you know, I live in the suburbs, you know, and in the suburbs it's, you know, city life, that type of thing. And when I go to Maine, I'm in the country. I appreciate nature. It gives me a new appreciation for nature. All right. It's good to recharge your batteries with experiences like that. Get yourself out of, you know, your routine for small periods of time so that you can see things from different angles. That really adds, it really adds to your capabilities of producing more. So look at a vacation. Don't say, oh, I got to get back to work, got to get back. Take the time. It's, it's there to regenerate you. To appreciate your life, understand yourself better. Give yourself some reflective time, okay? Once again, in your quiet thinking time, give yourself a chance to review the activities and figure out why things happened the way they happened, how they could have been better, how you could, you know, oh, I should have said this, I should have said that. You're going to find out in life that many of the same scenarios repeat themselves over and over and over and over again. All right, ask me, I've been divorced twice. All right, so they do. And so, you know, you reflect upon the things that happen to you and say, why did this happen? How could I have made it different? What could I have done to change? How could I make it more positive? And by the same token, also understand that it's not always your fault. All right, I mean, it takes two to tango. And, you know, it, sometimes it's, it's, not the other, it's not you, it's the other person, so give yourself credit. But in order to do that, you have to be able to understand, you know, about yourself and, and how you learn and what you're curious about and what your burning desires are. And the only way you can do that is by giving yourself some quiet thinking time to take everything in. Your life is a reflection of your perspective. I think we just covered that, did we not? It's how you think of things. When you think of something differently than the way you were before, it completely changes what it is you're thinking about. Completely changes what you're thinking about. All right, so be in a, be in a position where you can change paradigms, put yourself in the other person's shoes, because what you see is what gives you your perspective, what you feel, what you... You, the, you know, the sense of sight, taste, smell, touch, the relationship you have with those things is a re determines your perspective, okay? I know I had trouble saying that, but my point is when you see things differently, the thing that you're looking at looks different. Make time for the people that you love. One of the things you got to remember is why are you doing the things you're doing in business? Why are you embracing, you know, a particular cause that you want to achieve, that burning desire? You're doing it because of the people that you care the most about, your family. Does that make sense? So don't forget that they're there. It's easy to do. It's easy to get caught up in that burning desire. But make sure that you have, you know, and the balance is the balance of life. The balance isn't always going to be e even. As a matter of fact, most of the time it's not. But when you have that part of your life as an example where you're spending with your family, spend it with your family. Spend it with your children. Don't bring the office home with you. Get Have some balance. Now, like I said, things aren't going to be equal all the time, but make sure that when you're you know, on the three sides of the balance sheet, personal side, business side, spiritual side. And make sure that you give each its proper due. Make time for the people that you love. Your future is uncertain, so create a flexible plan today. Hey, it's important because you don't know what's going to happen. Do I have to tell you that, those of us that are living through a pandemic? Okay, you know, it, your, your future's uncertain, so have a plan B. Have something else that you can do. Have something on a back burner. Have a focus. 
Okay, don't get me wrong. Have a singleness of purpose. Have a focus. But say to yourself, this is what I'm focusing on right now, this minute. This is my single objective. But have something of a secondary nature that you can cling to, that you can advance to. And sometimes it's just as easily as what we just discussed, you know, the balance of life. You know, if something happens in business, all right, spend some time with your family, spend some time spiritually. You know, it, you're just kind of changing. Be flexible with how you allot your time. It will help you to overcome those challenging times. So be prepared to be flexible. Don't just be you know, so straight that, you know, and you no know changes in your life. Be ready to make some moves. You know, people my age that just won't embrace technology, the computer, you know, they're out of it. They're out of the loop. You've got to be flexible. Even if you've had a foundation for your whole life, at the end of your life, something, you know, important like computers and technology and the communication that we are capable of now changes things. You've got to be able to be flexible and embrace those changes. Everything is temporary. You know, you may think, you know, you're on a job and you may think to yourself, oh boy, this is you know, absolutely fabulous, fantastic. And then something happens. The owner of the business dies. You have a pandemic. Um, other parts of that are connected to that business go out of business. So many different things can change. Everything is temporary. So be ready to take some action in other areas. Have other interests. Have a variety of interests. And not just ones that you distract you. All right, don't get me wrong. Too many people live their life going from distraction to distraction. When I say interest, I'm talking about wholesome, worthwhile interests, not distractions. Everything is temporary, especially life itself, so keep that in mind. All right, we've gone over 10 more one-sentence life lessons. Once again, huge shout out to Matthew Royce. I love this article. I love these thoughts are just all over the ballpark, and I, I love sharing my thoughts with you on them. And next time we get together, we're going to do some more. Once again, huge shout out Matthew Royce. Until next time, don't ration the passion, fashion the passion. I'm Eli's dad.